Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Das Science, and today I want to discuss quantum field operators in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. Quantum field operators are a basic ingredient in quantum field theory, which underpins much of modern physics, from particle physics to condensed matter physics. In this video, we introduce quantum field operators as the creation and annihilation operators associated with the position representation. Let's go! To introduce quantum field operators, we first need a short refresher about changing bases in second quantization. In second quantization, we write both states and general operators in terms of creation and annihilation operators. So changing bases in second quantization amounts to figuring out how the creation and annihilation operators transform under a basis change. We have a full video in the description where we discuss this in detail, so check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Here I'll just summarize the key results from that video. We start with a single particle basis U that is orthonormal. The associated creation operator is A UI dagger, and the associated annihilation operator is its adjoint A UI. We also consider a second single particle basis V. In this case, we write the creation operator as A VJ dagger and the annihilation operator as A VJ. Remember that when these creation and annihilation operators describe identical bosons, they obey a set of commutation relations. And when they describe fermions, they obey a set of anti commutation relations. Luckily for us, the expressions for the change of bases are the same for both types of particles, so for now we'll keep the discussion general. So, what are these transformation relations? As we derive in the video on basis changes in second quantization, the creation operator in the V basis is equal to a sum over I of the bracket between the U basis states and the V basis states times the creation operator in the U basis. In a similar way, we can write the annihilation operator in the V basis as equal to a sum over I of the bracket between the V basis states and the U basis states times the annihilation operator in the U basis. We'll need to remember these expressions to introduce field operators, so again remember that you can find the full derivation and details behind these results in the video on basis changes that you can find linked in the description. We need a second ingredient to introduce field operators, the position representation. This too is a topic that we cover in detail in other videos linked in the description, and here I'll just summarize the key results. Working with a single particle for now, we consider the position operator R and its associated eigenvalue equation. As always, these are the eigenvalues and these are the eigenstates. The position operator is a Hermitian operator and this means that its eigenstates span an orthonormal basis for our state space. For a continuous quantity such as position, the orthonormality condition is written in terms of the Dirac delta function like this. And we can write any state phi in the position basis in the usual manner, and the expansion coefficients are functions phi of r, and given by the usual bracket between the basis states, and the state phi we're working with. In this context, we call the expansion coefficients here the wave function describing our quantum state. And this is all we need in terms of the position representation. But again, remember that you can find full details behind these expressions in the associated video linked in the description. We're now finally ready to introduce quantum field operators. In short, quantum field operators are the creation and annihilation operators written in the position representation. So why do we call them field operators? In physics, a field is a mathematical object that is defined at every point in space, and when we work in the position representation, we do indeed have a basis that is continuous in space. For this reason, we call the associated creation and annihilation operators quantum field operators, and we'll see they allow us to create 
and annihilate particles at any point in space. Let's start with our usual discrete U basis. And let's also consider the continuous position basis. Working with these two bases, we can write the creation operator A dagger in the position basis, which I label with this R subscript, in terms of the corresponding creation operator in the U basis by using the standard formula for a change of basis in second quantization that we discussed at the beginning of the video. And that's it. We call this creation operator here a creation quantum field operator for our system of identical particles. We'll see in a moment that this operator does indeed create a particle at position R, but before we do that I want to discuss an alternative notation that is most commonly used for field operators. First, know that the bracket between the U basis and the position basis can be written as the complex conjugate of the wave function of the basis state U. With this we can instead write the field operator as equal to the sum over i of the complex conjugate wave functions associated with the basis state Cu times the corresponding creation operators. But this is not yet the most common notation. What we typically do is to also write the creation operator AR as the operator psi dagger, which we write as a function of R. In this notation, we write our field operator in terms of the creation operator in the U basis like this. Now, why do we use this notation? Well, in the position representation, quantum states are given by wave functions, which we typically represent by the symbol psi. By analogy, we typically use the same symbol for the creation and annihilation operators associated with the position representation. But of course, you should not confuse this psi here, which is an operator, with the psi used to describe a wave function, which of course is not an operator. Let's make some room, and let's copy down our latest expression for the creation quantum field operator in terms of the creation operators in the discrete U basis. This is the field operator associated with the creation of a particle at position R. To confirm this, we consider the action of this field operator on the vacuum state. Using this expression up here for our creation field operator, we end up with this sum acting on the vacuum state. For convenience, we'll rewrite this wave function of the basis states in terms of the original bracket, and we also know that the action of the creation operator in the U basis on the vacuum state is to create a particle in state ui. Bringing these results together, we end up with this expression. This is just a scalar, so we can move it to the other side of the basis ket, and we end up with this expression where I'm writing a bracket around the summation in preparation for the final step. This final step is to realize that this summation is simply the resolution of the identity in the U basis, so we end up with the position eigenstate R. So what does this mean? The action of the creation field operator on the vacuum state creates a particle localized at position R. This is exactly what we expect for a creation operator in a given basis. Let's make some room again. This here is the field operator associated with the creation of a particle at position R. To introduce the field operator associated with the annihilation of a particle, we write the adjoint of the creation operator, which is just psi of R. And this is equal to the adjoint of the expansion in terms of creation operators in the U basis. Using the standard rules for adjoints, we can rewrite the adjoint of the sum as the sum of the adjoints. These expansion coefficients are scalars, so we get the sum of their complex conjugates, which are just the wave functions ui, and this is an operator, so we get the corresponding adjoint operator, which is just the annihilation operator in the u basis. Overall, we can write the field operator associated with the annihilation of a particle at position r as this expansion in terms of the corresponding annihilation operators in the u basis. 
Just like we've done for the creation operator, you should convince yourself that this operator does indeed remove a particle at position R. The demonstration is analogous to what we've done for the creation operator, so I won't do it again, but I encourage you to try it yourself, and you can find the step-by-step -step derivation in the problems and solutions linked in the description. In summary, we've started with a discrete basis U, and considered the associated creation and the annihilation operators. We have then considered a new basis given by the position eigenstates and built the associated creation operator psi dagger of R in terms of the creation operators in the U basis. And we've also built the associated annihilation operator psi of R in terms of the annihilation operators in the U basis. These creation and annihilation operators in the position representation are what we call quantum field operators. Conceptually, their meaning is very simple. Just like this creation operator in the U basis creates a particle in state UI, this creation field operator creates a particle at position R. And just like this annihilation operator in the U basis removes a particle in state UI, this annihilation field operator removes a particle at position R. It's often useful to invert these relations so that we can go from the field operators to the corresponding creation and annihilation operators in the U basis. The derivation of the corresponding expressions just involves the projection of the field operators onto the U basis. So I leave it as an exercise for you to show that we can write the creation operator in the U basis in terms of this integral over the creation field operators and the annihilation operator in the U basis in terms of this integral over the annihilation field operators. To finish, we'll generalize field operators to the case of particles with spin. First, let's have a quick refresher about how to describe spinful particles. Remember that for a particle with spin s, the eigenvalues of the spin z operator can take any of the values minus s, minus s plus 1, minus s plus 2, all the way to s minus 1 and s. If we look at all possible values, there are a total of 2s plus 1 values. For example, for a spin 1 half particle like the electron, the possible values of the spin z eigenvalue are minus one half and plus one half, which is a total of two possible values. The position representation for spinless particles is spanned by the R basis states we've been discussing so far. When working with particles of spin S, we consider the augmented basis states labeled by R and sigma. These basis states describe the position representation but now each position eigenstate is associated with a particular spin eigenvalue sigma here, where sigma can take any of the allowed values. This means that for each original position eigenstate, we now have 2s plus 1 different position eigenstates, one associated with each possible value of the spin z eigenvalue. And the word of caution at this point, don't confuse this label sigma here, with the Pauli matrices, which are often also described with the symbol sigma. In this augmented basis for spinful particles, we can write a general quantum state phi as equal to this long expansion over the augmented basis states. And in this case, the wave function depends on both the position and the spin labels. These labels R and sigma are equivalent in the sense that they just allow us to label the different basis states, but R is a continuous label leading to an integral here, whereas sigma is a discrete label leading to a summation here. Let's make some room. We again consider a discrete basis U and our new augmented position basis for spinful particles. Working with these two bases, we now write the creation field operator as psi sigma dagger of R, where the subindex sigma here labels a discrete spin degree of freedom, and the R here 
labels the continuous position degree of freedom. Extending our original definition of the creation field operator, we can write it as the sum over the wave functions of the U basis times the associated creation operators in the U basis. In a similar way, we can define the annihilation field operator for the spinful particles with its corresponding sum in terms of annihilation operators in the U basis. Quantum field operators are central in modern physics. They provide a very powerful framework to study, amongst others, the combination of quantum mechanics with Einstein's special theory of relativity. We explore some of their properties and their uses in the videos linked in the description, so check them out. And as always, I hope you like the video and please subscribe.